Hello, I'm Mrs. Jansen, and today in our art, we're going to create night owls. Let's look at this night owl, and you'll notice that this looks very different than owls look in real life. An artist's goal is not always to create art exactly like it looks in real life. Artists often like to create art in their own artistic style. I'd like you to notice all the lines and marks that this artist used to create texture. You can see a lot of texture on the owl, the center of the feathers, on the wings, and the leaves. There's some interesting facts about owls. There are over 200 types. Most are nocturnal, which means active at night. Most owls have large eyes and a flat face. Here we see three owls and they each look different than each other. You can compare to see similarities and you can contrast to notice the differences. Our first vocabulary word today is texture, the way something feels or looks like it may feel. Examples of texture include smooth, rough, soft, and hard. Notice how an artist uses lines and marks to create those textures. Our next vocabulary word is contrast. Different art elements create visual interest. For example, the art element of color. Let's look at the image on the bottom left corner and notice the contrast between the colors black and white. I'm sure you've just made a connection with a checkerboard. Earlier, we've discussed texture as the art element. But in art, if you have contrasts of texture, you include both rough and smooth textures, hard and soft textures, you create visual interest. Now let's look at the contrast in size. For example, large and small in the image of the dogs on the bottom right. Remember differences in art make it look interesting. You can create interesting textures with pencil, also called graphite. You can use your pencil in different ways to experiment while creating textures. You can change the direction that you use your pencil. You can draw shorter and longer or overlapping marks or lines. You can change the pressures. These are several interesting texture examples that you can experiment with. You may or may not use them in the art that we create today, but it may be an opportunity for you to go back to these textures, experiment and practice, and use them in a future work of art. Let's get started drawing our night owl together. Please have your pencil and paper ready. You can add color to your artwork using crayon if you choose later. You'll see my screen change so that we can draw together. So we're going to start today with our paper portrait style that's vertical or the tall way. 
in the center of the paper, we're going to start with ovals. So this oval shape is an organic oval that we see in nature. So the edges can be unpredictable. And now we're gonna draw a second oval. So notice how I pick up my pencil. I'm doing what's called searching. I'm drawing searching lines and we're sketching. Let's go inside this oval with a smaller one. And inside this smaller oval that you're creating inside these two ovals, now you can draw the eyes however you'd like. I'm just going to add a small oval to show a highlight and make it look like my owl is going to be looking up. And now if you choose to, you can add a mark or a line to show texture around the eyes or create a style. Remember, you're making your own choices and you don't have to add exactly what you see me adding. You have to decide what's best for you and your artwork. Okay, now I'm gonna go above these ovals with a curved line like a rainbow. And now I'm gonna continue to create a curve line like a smile and I'm making a larger oval. Now in the center, I'm going to create a curve line more like a rainbow and diagonal lines. We're going to create the beak and it's going to look like an upside down rounded triangle. And remember, anytime you're drawing, if you want to change something, your eraser is really a great tool. It's often called a reverse drawing tool. And you can use it to change or refine your work. All right, now underneath the beak, I'm going to add a curve line like a smile. And now I'm going to go um, underneath this curve line. I'm going to add another one that goes up to the top of the head. And I'm going to go back in and erase that line from that last curve line like a smile that we added. Now I'm going to go on this side. And I'm going to add that curve line that goes up and around to the top of the head. So now at the top of the head, I can decide how I'd like to draw it. I'm first going to connect these lines with a curved line. And I think this works well because if you're an artist that decides now that you want to add another curve at the top, all you do is make curve lines like a V, and then you'd be able to erase this. So 
So for example, here we have that curved line. And then if you decide that you want the very top of the owl's head to go down in the center, just add curved lines to form a more open letter V, and then you can erase that line. And now we need to add the ears. I'm going to add to that curve at the top and add a curved line that comes up and goes back to the head. And then I'm going to erase this line. Now I'm going to go over on this side. Curve line that goes up and goes back to the head. And these do not have to look exactly the same. And then I'm going to step back and decide if there's anything that, any line that I want to add to or change. All right, so now we've got the head of the owl drawn. And for now, we're going to focus on the body of the owl. I'm going to add a curve line that might remind you of a stretched out letter C. And then on this side, a curve line that might remind you of a stretched out backwards C. Now I'm going to add a second curve line, depending upon when you look at your owl, you can decide if you add that second line on the outside of the first curve line you drew or on the inside. I'm going to draw mine on the inside. And these two curve lines represent the wings that the owl has folded back as it's sitting on a branch. So we've got quite a bit of space underneath our owl and we're going to start to draw the feet or the talons and I want you to think about those curving around a branch to hold on. So we're going to use a curved line that looks a lot like a C and then we're going to draw a second C next to it and a third one. And now it's time to connect these two lines. And now when we get to the other foot, we're going to start with a backwards C. And we're going to add a second backwards C. And a third one. We're going to go to the front and connect those. And it's okay if they don't look exactly the same. Now we said that this owl it's going to be sitting on a branch. So go ahead and add those two horizontal lines for the edges of the branch. And then we're going to add a horizontal line at the top and the bottom on the left and the top and the bottom on the right. Now we need to look at the bottom of the owl. And if you've got an open space, bring the line down to the branch. If you have any lines from your owl going into the branch, go ahead and erase those. All right, now let's decide what our branch is going to look like. I'm going to have the branch go all the way off the page. And now we have to decide what the branch is going to look like on this side. I'm going to add a curve. line and I often think of V's like the letter V see how that looks like a letter V or a letter Y and this is going to remind you more of the letter Y
All right, so now we've got the main shape of our branch. There's a lot of different trees. So there's a lot of different branches and we're all different artists. So we're drawing this in our own way. Now it's time to add texture. Let's think of different marks or lines that would remind us of a rough texture of tree bark. So I'm gonna go on top of the lines that I used to draw this branch and add some small wavy or squiggly lines. Don't forget to add the texture in between the feet of the owl. And you go all around the branch, top, bottom, and in between. So we're changing the texture of the branch from smooth with that straight line to rough with the squiggly line. All right, and now it's time to go back inside the branch and add or marks to create texture of tree bark. Everyone can add these marks or lines in any way that makes you think of that texture. Now you don't want all the lines to look exactly the same. And remember, it's not a continuous line. That means it's not one line that never ends on the branch, you're gonna pick up your pencil as you make different lines and marks. They can even go in different directions. Some of them may overlap. Think about the spaces in between your lines as you think of tree bark. So look at the difference of this compared to this side of the branch. So make sure you continue in the center. So continue to fill that branch with different marks that make you think of the texture of the tree bark. And as you're finishing, think about whether or not you'd like to add more branches or leaves on your tree. So I'm gonna add some leaves. I'm going to start with some straight or diagonal lines. So notice how many of these lines might remind you of that letter Y. Forward facing Y or backwards. 
All right, and now we're gonna add leaves. Now there's a lot of different trees with a lot of different types of leaves. So you can add leaves any way you'd like. You may have decided that you don't wanna have leaves. It's up to you. So if you have a tree that's lost all its leaves, it's called deciduous tree that drops its leaves. These leaves can overlap. They don't have to all look exactly the same. They can be different shapes and sizes. Remember that contrast, differences make your art look interesting. All right, now we're gonna go back in and add additional texture inside the leaves. All right, so now we've had plenty of practice with texture and it's time to go back to our owl. So first thing I'd like you to do is look at the head of the owl and decide if there's any lines that you would like to add more pressure to. You want the head to really stand out and look like it's in front of or above the body. So we're gonna use a little bit heavier pressure on the head. And now we're ready to think about feathers in the center of the owl. So you can use any lines or shapes you're gonna see me use a curved line, more like a, the letter U, uppercase. And I'm gonna create a lot of connected overlapping U's that go down the center of the owl. So while you're adding lines or shapes, remember you're thinking about feathers. So notice that after I have this down the center, I'm going to build off of it. I'm going to go off to the right and off to the left. And they do not all have to be exactly the same. time you're adding these shapes, be thinking about the texture of feathers. Once you've finished filling in the center, now we're going to add the texture. And you can add a lot of different types of marks to show the texture of feathers. Think about adding that texture in lighter pressure first, and then consider later adding to it. So I'm gonna put my first layer of texture on all these feathers.
And now I'm going to go back to these feathers and I'm going to add heavier pressure on the outside of this U shape. And then I'm going to go back to the bottom and add a heavier pressure. Remember, you're making your own choices and you don't have to make the same choices that you see me make. You have to decide what's best for you and your artwork. It's very helpful to always uh, step back a little bit from your art as you're making choices. So remember, add a little bit of heavier pressure on the outside and then add that second layer. So there's a lot of different layers in art. So notice how different this texture is in comparison to the tree bark on the branch. So always step back from the textures that you've created, look closely at your art and decide if there's any areas that you need to add heavier pressure to. Now let's go back and add heavier pressure to those two curved lines that form the wings. And here you can decide if you're going to add any additional lines or textures to the wings. I'm going to add some curved lines. Please make the choice that you believe is best for your artwork. So here we have our night owl, and now we need to show the night sky. I want you to think about the night sky as the background. The stars and possibly the moon, if you decide to add it, are way in back in the distance. So they should be smaller. Again, we can use our own artistic style as we draw stars and the moon. Maybe you decide you'd like to add a shooting star. If you add stars, you don't have to add them all the same. If you add the moon, make sure it looks like it's in the distance. It can be in any phase. I decided to add a crescent moon. Okay. 
there's many ways that you can show stars. You may want to add little circles. Some of you may prefer to add this style of star where it looks like X's and a horizontal and vertical line. I'd like you to remember that the sky in the background is above the owl, on the side of the owl. It's also in between the branches and it's below the branch. So don't forget to add some stars for the night sky below the branch. All right, so now we're ready to finish our artwork. And there's so many details that you've added to show your own artistic style. It's up to you how you finish today. You can continue in pencil. You can add more texture and more value, lights and darks, by changing the pressure of your pencil. Even in pencil, you can see contrast or differences. I'm going to show you a couple of works in progress just to give you an example of the difference that different art materials can make. So I started in crayon and I was choosing colors that were very different than real life. I also decided to add value. Notice that you see darks and lights. And when I was coloring the beak, I moved my crayon in the direction of the curve of a rainbow to make it look more rounded. I also moved my crayon in a circular direction on the eyes to give them more of an illusion of three dimensional form like a sphere. When you use one color on top of another, it's called blending. Here you see the same color with heavier pressure at the bottom. And you'll also notice that I went over the pencil lines with a black marker. Here's another example that shows a lot of different colors and textures. So remember, your art can be exactly what you feel is best for you and your art. And it's perfectly uh, fine if you want to stay in pencil. The pencil drawing is a beautiful work of art and you don't have to add any more materials. It's entirely up to you. So I've enjoyed making art with you today and I hope you have too and I look forward to making art with you again next time.